is at sunrise. It is 459. Here's a look at your morning headlines. Police are searching for this 16 year old in Beaverton. They say Emmeline Tesh disappeared from St. Vincent Medical Center yesterday around noon. She's 5'2 with brown hair and blue eyes. Her mom says Emmeline has health issues, so they really want to find her. Call police if you see her. Rescue crews found another body on Idaho's Silver Mountain. That makes three people killed in Tuesday's avalanche. Crews found four other people and they are expected to be okay. They don't think anyone else is missing. And fresh off one of their best wins of the season, uh, the Blazers dropped last night's game to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, they are now 16 and 23 on the season and have lost seven of their last nine games. Ah. Ouch! Those are your Friday headlines now. Here's what's coming up on Sunrise. It will be a good Sunrise show. I'm going to promise that this morning, Brenda. And we start with a story we talked about earlier this week, but now they are here this weekend. The King Tide Waves arrive on the Oregon coast. So we're going to let you know when they'll be at their strongest and where exactly you can see them along the coast coming up at 530. And when I say Huber's, Brenda Braxton, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Spanish coffees. I thought that would be your answer. <laughs> when I say Rod Hill, does anyone think of the word bartender? Mm, not usually. <laughs> that is the job that Rod is on this morning. <laughs> Rod on the job at Huber's Cafe, learning how to make those Spanish Ooh, coffees. Ooh, I'm so jealous. Hey, let's cheers to almost the weekend. Are you ready? Cheers. There's a ton of weather to talk about, not just bartending, Rod. What do you have for us this bartending, morning? Bartending. <laughs> uh, you know, bartending is one of the few jobs I've actually never had. I've had a lot. I never did that. Now I have. All right, here's the radar. I want to be very clear. This morning will be the quiet part of our day, okay? We just have a few light showers up and down the I-5 corridor. You see the steady rain building offshore. There's a front that will be coming into the I-5 corridor between 1 and 2 today. That'll bring a shot of pretty heavy, steady rain, we think, and uh, also some gusty winds. Good visibility this morning. Temperatures not bad, 40 degrees. Remember yesterday we had those freezing spots, not today. To the bus stop we go. So about 38 when the kids walk out the door. Some showers around but not very wet. Same thing at lunchtime recess, 45 degrees, but winds will be coming up from the southwest. There's actually a wind advisory today for wind gusts to about 40, 40 miles, uh, 40, 45 miles per hour, kind of what we've been seeing a lot the last couple of weeks. And there at three o'clock when the kids get out of school, they're in the meat of that rain band. So that's pretty wet. More on the weather. I mean, a lot more on the weather coming up. All right, Rod. Thank you very much. We start this hour of news with a development out of the Middle East. Iran is denying allegations that it launched a missile that took down the Ukrainian commercial plane that crashed earlier this week, killing everyone on board. That plane went down near Tehran shortly after takeoff on Tuesday. 176 people, including 63 Canadians, were on board the plane. The crash happened the same night that Iran launched missiles at two American air bases in Iraq. Now, Canadian and U.S. intelligence officials say Iran unintentionally hit the plane in the middle of that attack. There was a lot of evidence of puncture marks in various parts of the fuselage, engine casings, and, and other debris, which means that something external to the aircraft, like shrapnel, blew up and then punctured the, uh, the fuselage itself. Meanwhile, Iran's head of civil aviation invited officials from around the world, and that includes the U.S. and Canada, to come and see how they investigated the crash. He also called on U.S. officials to share any and all reports about the crash with the world. Well, House lawmakers voted to limit President Trump's ability to take military action against Iran. The War Powers Resolution passed largely along party lines, with only three Republicans supporting it. It's mostly symbolic. It's not legally binding. In the meantime, President Trump is standing by his decision to launch the drone strike that killed Iran's top general. And last week, the United States once again took the bold and decisive action to save American lives and deliver American justice. And you know what I'm talking about. He said that last night at a rally in Toledo, Ohio, the first official campaign stop of the president's 2020 campaign. All right, let's get to some uh, some of our top local stories this morning. And we start with family and friends gathering tonight for a candlelight vigil, vigil that is, for 20-year-old Allison Watterson. Allison disappeared three weeks ago now. Investigators have been following leads near North Plains. That's where she was last seen with her boyfriend. 
Allison's loved ones want to bring awareness to her case, and that is why they're holding that candlelight vigil tonight. So it's happening at Jesse Mays Community Park in North Plains, and it starts at 730. This morning, we're hearing from the parents who tragically lost their 11 year old son in Gresham. Luis Medina was hit and killed by a car walking to school on Monday. Police say that driver had taken pain pills and was impaired. Luis's mom and dad say they're overwhelmed by the kindness and the generosity they've been shown as their new reality starts to settle in. They don't speak English, so Luis's cousin translated for them. La que le quitó la vida a mi hijo. She says that to the man that was driving that car, she wishes with all her heart that he never has to go through this pain that she is feeling, uh, the loss of a son. And to her, it doesn't matter how much anger she may feel, it won't bring back her son. So, so, so sad. There is a GoFundMe. It's been created for the family. It's already surpassed its goal of $30,000. A public memorial service for Luis will be held Tuesday at 11 a.m. It's at St. Anne Catholic Church. You'll find much more on our website, kgw.com. We also have an update on a story that we've been following now for seven years. So back in 2013, a woman walked into a bakery in Gresham and asked the bakery to make her a wedding cake. What happened next, though, made national headlines. The owners of Sweet Cakes by Melissa refused to bake that cake because it was for a same-sex wedding. In 2015, the Oregon Bureau of Labor and Industries found the bakery's decision violated the state's non-discrimination statutes. In 2017, the Oregon Court of Appeals affirmed that ruling, but the Supreme Court ordered the appeals court to take up the case again. So after yesterday's hearing, we spoke to both the couple and an attorney for the bakery owners. Being told our business isn't welcome and then having our devoted relationship of 10 years and the commitment we've made to raise our children together characterized as a biblical abomination. That experience has affected us in our daily interactions ever since. They love to be able to welcome everybody into their shop. They serve everybody that came into their shop. They just are asking not to be forced to endorse every message that they are asked to, to create. The judges will decide if Oregon's Bureau of Labor and Industries was right when they find the bakery owners. There is no time time uh, timeline that is set right now for when the court will issue that decision. The controversy over Salem's camping ban shows no sign of ending. The city still hasn't made good on a promise to open 140 new shelter beds, but it has hired professional garbage crews to clean the sidewalks. Salem officials tell us business owners downtown complained nonstop that the sidewalks were crowded. They also reported threatening behavior and sanitation issues like solid waste and trash. The city says the cleanup was necessary to keep everybody healthy and safe. In the meantime, the city says it is working on those new shelter pets. All right, Brenda, weather has been the big story that we've talked about all week here in the Sunrise Show, and I am confident that weather will continue to dominate the local headlines here for the next few days. So here is a friendly reminder to download the KGW News app, and that, of course, will keep you up to date with Rod, with our weather team, all their forecasts, and the developing news on next week's snow potential in the valley. So to download the app, all you need to do right now is point your phone at that QR code that's mm -hmm. popping up on the bottom of your screen. <laughs> so literally point your phone at that QR code. So as you're doing all that, we do want to show you the snow up at Ski Bowl. It opened last night and Catherine Cook went to government camp to check it out. A blanket of white against the night sky at Ski Bowl means the wait is over. This is the first night we're open for skiing and riding um, and it is an awesome one. My plan is just to wax my board today and let's go on the big lift. No one's more excited than Burton Johnson and his brothers already thinking up snowboard tricks. Popping some wheelies. <laughs> yeah. Popping some wheelies. All right, popping your wheelies. I would pop my back. <laughs> yeah. For those less inclined to hit the incline, you can make snow angels. Maybe that's this guy's thank you to heaven. It dumped this week for all the snow. The whole world is, is gone. It's just here in the winter wonderland and we're just here together and it's, it's magic. Doesn't get much better than this. Ski Bowl GM Mike Quinn is happy 
and relieved. It was a really tough and challenging uh, Christmas break. There were a lot of pent up demand. There was still a lot of visitation here, but I think people were a little let down with the conditions of Mount, Ho Mount Hood in general. He says a week like the one they're expecting should make up for all of that. It just seems like everybody is in the mood um, and they're really excited to be here. Now that Ski Bowl is open, you can hit the slopes here seven nights a week. The lifts are also open during the day on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you can even pop a wheelie. In government camp, <laughs> Catherine Cook, KGW News. It is gorgeous mm. up there. I put my snow tires on the car. Well, I didn't do it. Thank you, discount tire. Um, <laughs> I might as well take a little trip up there. It's beautiful. It is always amazing to me. I mean, they just opened last night for night skiing, and then everyone like knew about <laughs> yeah. it and was there. Yeah. I was sleeping, I guess, when that news happened. <laughs>